What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you these five amazing plugins for Revit. So plugins or extensions are additional programs that you can install and they kind of attach to your original program, in this case we're talking about Revit, and then you can use those plugins and they usually offer something that the original software doesn't have as an option, so some additional tools or something like that. So I'm going to be sharing the uh, five top plugins and of course this is my list, if you have your own list feel free to share, uh, share it with me in the comment section below, tell me which plugin you like to use, uh, what, do you do, what do you prefer, why do you like that, and uh, uh, does, does it save you time with something or something like that? Why do you like that plugin? But this is my first list. Okay, so let's get straight into that and the first uh, undisputed champion of Revit plugins is the plugin that actually comes with newer versions of Revit and that's Dynamo. So Dynamo is a visual programming uh, plugin uh, that allows you to, well, visually program Revit. So programming is extremely complex and uh, it's hard to learn, but visual programming allows you to, well, visually program using nodes and connecting those nodes. Now, why would you use this? Well, uh, Revit uh, can kind of be tough when it comes to uh, performing certain tasks, so it would be uh, kind of nice if you can program Revit to do exactly what you want to do, but again, as I said, programming is hard. So you can use Dynamo to program certain tasks that Revit doesn't do out of the box. So for example, if you have a certain complex shape, you can uh, use these nodes to create an algorithm and then that algorithm is connected to Revit elements and components and then you can basically create elaborate shape that uh, Revit just out of the box wouldn't be able to create. Also if you have certain tasks that you would like to perform that Revit doesn't have a specialized tool for and there isn't a workaround, well, in that case, again, Dynamo can prove to be a solution for that. Uh, additionally, it can be used for repetitive tasks. So, for example, if you have a task that, or maybe a set of uh, set of uh, tasks that you do, so maybe you select something, you rotate it, you copy it, you do something else. Uh, so, if it's repetitive and if it's annoying, you can use Dynamo to program or automate those tasks, so you can save uh, save a bit of time. So uh, learning Dynamo can make you extremely efficient when it comes to working uh, with Revit and it allows you to build on to the software. So that's why I think it earns the uh, first place for Revit plugins. The second plugin that I want to talk about is the Color Splasher. So this is a really useful and a very simple plugin and it performs the tasks of uh, basically visualizing certain uh, project parameters. So what this tool allows allows you to do is to select a category, maybe walls, then you select a parameter, maybe wall length, and then you also select uh, the way that you, or the, the color scheme that you want to use, and then this tool basically highlights all of those elements within your model using the color scheme that you have assigned. So you can visually see where the parameter is maybe larger or smaller or something like that. So it's a great way of visualizing certain parameters. So you you can make design decisions uh, a bit easier in Revit or if you're just looking with, uh, for some problematic spots you can use this uh, you can use this tool for that as well. The next plugin or the next tool is going to be PyRevit. Now this is a really cool tool that uh, allows you to program Revit using the Python uh, programming language. Now don't worry, if you don't know programming languages or if you don't know Python, you can still uh, find this tool very beneficial. So you basically download it and install it as a plugin and then it comes with some tools out of the box that the whole uh, PyRevit community has created and then you can just go ahead and use these tools uh, for uh, for modeling. Now if you uh, are proficient with Python you can program certain tools of your own and then you can share it with the PyRevit community and then that tools can be integrated into the plugin as well. So it's kind of cool, it's kind of this open source uh, 
uh, kind of tool that utilizes uh, utilizes programming languages and then it allows you to create new tools and I think it's a great idea and if you want to uh, see learn more about it I, I suggest you check it out and if you're interested uh, in in a tutorial about that tell me in the comment section below and actually if you're interested in tutorials about any of these plugins please tell me in the comment section below so I know and maybe to, I can create a tutorial on one one of these topics. Okay, moving on, let's uh, go with the plugin number four, and that's going to be Site Designer. Now, I actually already have a tutorial on this, so I will be linking it up in the description of this video, so just down below. So, Site Designer is a really cool plugin that allows you to use some of the advanced tools for uh, modeling your site in Revit. That's why it's called Site Designer. So it allows you to create roads or to manipulate uh, the terrain in Revit a bit more intuitively. I guess that's that's the idea. Now it still isn't as refined as you would want it to be and that's uh, that, that goes with all of the, the Revit plugins. Uh, usually plugins are not uh, working as good as uh, just native Revit tools and that's just natural. I mean, if it did work as good as Revit tools, it would probably be a part of the Revit toolset. So they tend to, uh, th these tools tend to be maybe not that intuitive as you would expect them to be. But once you learn how to use them and once you learn all of the pros and cons and little tips and tricks on, uh, on, on the whole approach of using these tools, it can make it a lot easier in this case to design the site uh, for your project. And I actually have a whole course on site design and that's available on my Patreon. That will be the first link in the description of this video. It's like a three-hour course on designing the site uh, in Revit and you can find that and I have multiple other advanced courses. I've got over 45 hours of content there. So if you're interested in that, check it out. So anyway, Site Designer is this really cool tool for designing roads uh, some, or just rearranging the site in your uh, in your Revit project. And moving on finally to the final plugin, and that's not going to be an actual plugin, that's going to be a series of plugins. And those will be exporting plugins. So for many individual uh, softwares, you have a uh, you have to have an export plugin that you install in Revit. So for example, if you want to use Revit files in some other program, so let's say you have a Revit project, but you want to be able to open it up in a uh, in, in, in Archicad, you have a plugin for that. If you want to open up your Revit project in Navisworks, you have a plugin for that. If you want to open it up in uh, Xuver, you can, uh, and there is a plugin for that. So there are more multiple uh, plugins like this that allow you to basically export a file format that uh, basically changes the Revit file format to a file format that's going to agree a little bit better with the software where you want to import that Revit file in. So if you want to maybe be able to be compatible with some of the uh, other softwares or if you're working with somebody that uses different software, make sure that you search for a uh, export plugin for Revit, install that plugin and then export to that file format that's going to be uh, a bit more agreeable with the software that you're trying to export to. So that's something else that you uh, that you might find useful when it comes to Revit plugins. Okay, so that's my list. Those are my favorites. And again, as I said, please tell me in the comment section below uh, what are some of your favorite plugins and what are some of your favorite tools. And uh, I, I will uh, research those. And if I find them interesting, I might do a tutorial on one of those. So I, I think it can be beneficial for the whole Balkan architect community. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this uh, quick little list on my favorite or my top Revit plugins. And I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.